So we're doing integration by parts here. Now, if you've seen the product rule before, the integration by parts formula comes directly from that. So the product rule, as a reminder, if u equals some function f of x and v equals some other function g of x, we can say that u times v, if we want to find the derivative of that, uv dash, we do it by doing uv dash plus v u dash. Okay, now I'm going to manipulate this to create the integration by parts formula. The first thing I'm going to do is take the integral of both sides. So now that that's done, we've got the integral of that is equal to the integral of that plus the integral of that. Look at this thing. It's really interesting because it's uv dash, so the derivative and then the integral of the derivative. The integral of the derivative, because derivatives and integrals are reverses, the integral of the derivative is just the original. That is to say that all of that is just equal to uv. If that didn't make sense, pause the video and really think about it. You found the derivative, then you found the integral. Done. Now that I've got this neat little relationship here, this is the integration by parts relationship, but it's not the formula that we associate with it. To get that, I'm just going to rearrange it. I'm going to take uh, that and put it on the other side and move uv over to the other side as well. It's going to look like this. This is it. This is what we want. This is integration by parts, this formula right here. What this essentially allows us to do is find the integral of a product of uh, functions. It's the product rule, but integration, essentially. All right, so I'm going to move this formula over here. I'm going to rub all this out. And we're going to do some questions. So here it is. It's an integral. Importantly, it's an integral of a product of functions, x times cos x with respect to x, integration by parts. All right, so x, look at our formula, the integral of u v dash, right? So I'm going to let this x be u, and I'm going to let this cos x be v dash. A little bit different to the product rule in the sense that one of the functions is u and one of the functions is the derivative of v. Just formalize that a little bit. So I'm going to let u equal x and v dash equal cos x. All right, so I've come from the future here just to answer a question that I think everyone's going to have, which is which one should I make u and which one should I make v dash? This formula isn't symmetrical, so it really does matter which one you make u and which one you make v dash. If you make the wrong one u and the wrong one v dash, then the formula gets really complicated and you can't solve it. So that matters. However, it's a little complicated to explain it right now until you've seen lots of integration by parts. So I'm going to do this whole video. I'm just going to choose which one u and v dash is. And then the next video is going to be me explaining how I choose which one is u and which one is v dash. For now, just trust me and watch which ones I choose. So, by writing this little thing in here now, I can write this formula a little bit differently. I can say the integral of x cos x with respect to x will be equal to, and now I can look at my formula here, it's going to be equal to the integral of u v dash with respect to x, because I've said that u is x and v dash is cos x. And using my formula, I can say that it's equal to uh, u v minus the integral of v u dash with respect to x. Okay, now that I've done that, I can sub in a bunch of values. Now, I really like to put something up the top here, or to the side, I suppose, just to guide me and make sure I don't make any silly mistakes. u dash uh, v v dash. And I just write in everything here, because I'm going to need it all. Right, I already said u was x. Uh, u dash is 1 then, because the derivative of x is 1. Uh, v dash was cos x, and the, deriv the integral of cos x is sin x. Alright, so I had to calculate that, and I had to calculate that, and that's just to guide me a little bit. Okay, let's go. Uh, uv, uv, so that's going to be x sine x, minus the integral of, um, where are we? We need v u dash. All right, so u dash is just 1 multiplied by v. I'm just finding the integral of sine x with respect to x. Okay, I can finish this now. x sine x, I don't have to integrate. It's there. It's done. It's finished. x sine x minus. Now, the integral of sine x is negative cos x. So it's minus minus cos x, positive cos x, and then don't forget your plus c on the end. That was integration by parts. That's it. That's the total thing. Really keep an eye on what I've done. 
setting this out makes your life easier. Let it equal that, write down your formula, therefore this, do a little bit of stuff over here, put it all in here, and we're done. All right, let's do another one. So a second example here, and I've just left these things because I know I'm going to fill them in eventually, and I think it's nice to see that I'm going to keep doing that every time I do these questions. So uh, you can see that it's an integral of a product of functions again, x times e to the x. So there's a function here which we can call u, and there's a function here which we can call v dash. Okay, so what do we know? We know u is equal to x, and we know v dash is equal to e to the x. Now, I can fill in my little table here, which always makes my life easier. I know that u equals x, I know u dash equals 1, I know v dash equals e to the x, and I know that the integral of e to the x is e to the x. This is going to be really straightforward. All right, now, I write out the question again. The integral of x e to the x with respect to x is equal to, and now we know that that's u and that's v dash, is equal to u v dash with respect to x. Okay, now we know from our integration by parts formula that that's going to be equal to, I really don't want that there, uv minus the integral of v u dash with respect to x. And then we just sub in our values, u v, sorry, u v, so x e to the x, minus uh, the integral of v e to the x u dash, 1 times e to the x, we get e to the x here with respect to x. All right, this is done. We don't need to do anything with that. It's the same before. And then the integral of e to the x is e to the x minus e to the x. Uh, we don't need it with respect to x. But we do need a plus c. All right, we have integrated that. Now, I think this is going to come in really handy later on. So I'm just going to write it over here. Okay, don't ask me why that's going to be useful, just trust me, it will be. All right, we have done this question. Example 2, done. We've integrated x e to the x and gotten through it to here. You can see this is going to be pretty procedural. That's not Now, this next one's not going to feel like integration by parts when you first look at it. If we look at integral uh, inverse sine x with respect to x, and you're thinking to yourself, wait, it's not a product of functions, so how on earth am I going to get this thing done? There's always an extra function lurking in there, and if it's useful, we can use it. Now, what I mean by that is we can always see that there's a number 1 out the front there. Now, in this case, I'm going to let inverse sine x be my u, and I'm going to let that number 1 lurking out the front be my v dash. So now that I've done that, I've got u, I've got v dash. v is going to be the integral of that, which is x and u dash is going to be 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. That's an identity you should know. All right, and now we get stuck into it. So we say that the integral of the thing we started with can now be expressed as the integral of u v dash. And using our integration by parts formula, we have u v minus the integral of v u dash with respect to x and then we can substitute all of our stuff u and v and v and u dash into that formula i'm going to do it all right that's done there i've got x inverse sine x minus the integral of uh, v v times one over that so that ends up being x over root one minus x squared now we've got to integrate that. Now that is an ugly one, and you've actually got to do that integration by substitution. I don't want to bore you with that because you already know how to do it, but I just want to note that when I do my substitution here, because I've already used u and v, I'm going to use w for my w substitution. I'm going to let w equal 1 minus x squared, do this little bit here, and I'm going to end up with an integral of negative a half. That x cancels out with that x, um, and... I end up with 1 over root w uh, with respect to w. Now, I can integrate that from there. I'm not going to sh show you how to do that integration here because that's not the point of this video. All right, uh, let's join up the action with the solution, and then we're done. All right, so when you integrate 1 over root w, which is what you can do in maths methods, you'll get this root 1 minus x squared once you sub in that 1 minus x squared back in for w. Um, all right, that's our final answer to the integral of 
inverse sine x. All right, we're going to do one more example because we still need to use what I said was going to be useful information. So we're going to call this one the looper because sometimes when you do integration by parts, you end up in a little bit of a loop. It all works out in the end, but it takes a little while. All right, so integral of x squared e to the x. You can see we've got a u here. We've got a v dash here. Uh, and we can put them in there and formalize it on this side as well. So now that we've identified u and v dash and all the rest of it, we can get started. We're going to find the integral of x squared e to the x with respect to the x, but now we can express it as u v dash with respect to x. And using our formula, we know that that's u v minus the integral of v u dash with respect to x. All right. And then we start subbing some stuff in. So we know that u is x squared and v is e to the x. So we end up with x squared e to the x minus the integral of v u dash. Okay, so v is e to the x and u dash is 2x. So that's 2x e to the x uh, with respect to x. I've just written it in that way. It doesn't matter if you write it the other way, but that one just looks neater to me. Okay. This looks okay, it looks fine for now, but this is where it ends up in a loop. Because what we have inside of this integration by parts formula is an integration by parts. Okay, if no one had shown you anything before example four, you would then have to go through a second portion of integration by parts. Do integration by parts a second time now. But luckily, Here's one I prepared earlier. We know that the integral of x e to the x with respect to x is equal to that. That means that the integral of 2x e to the x with respect to the x would be equal to double that, which means that I can take that and shove it in here because we did example one before, or maybe it was example two. In any case, whatever example this was, We've got that integration now, so we can put it in there. If we didn't, we'd have to do integration by parts a second time, the looper. So I've put it in there now, and you might be looking at it and saying, well, hang on, uh, you said you were going to multiply this by 2, but you didn't multiply the c by 2. c is just an arbitrary constant, so if I was to multiply c by 2, I'd just get a different c. So we don't include the c inside of that multiplication. Okay, that is a perfectly good integration, but I can sort of see what we should do. We should expand these because you can see e to the x, e to the x, e to the x everywhere. So we should really just take out e to the x and then factorize it appropriately. So this term needs to be x squared. This one would be negative 2x. And this one, be a bit careful, it would have to be positive 2 plus c. All right, that's integration. First, we started off by looking at it and just understanding that it's the product rule in reverse. And now we've done four examples using integration 